if you look at those big tech companies, and but that's not a sustainable thing if you're trying to own great companies. The reality is those seven companies, one of them, NVIDIA, is actually firing on all cylinders. Everybody else just stopped acting like a fucking moron. Mm. And that's not a sustainable business strategy, meaning, you know, it, burning billions and billions of dollars a quarter totally wastefully with all kinds of random free stuff to a bunch of entitled side employees. Side projects, side quests. And then mm. taking that away doesn't ensure long-term success for anybody. All it does is just tourniquets the bleeding. And so you have more material short-term cash flow and the markets are going to reward it, especially yes. in a moment where it's the trade-off is against rates, short-term rates that are five or 6%. But from here, right, the real long-term value creation is still going to go to the companies that are building true product market fit and product value well said, and, yeah, are, well are, and are really growing in a material way from adoption and usage, not from cost cutting because people yeah. see through that. And when rates start to get cut, they'll see through it even faster. The only time cost cutting gets rewarded is when short-term rates are this high because people love short-term cash flow. Yeah, and it was... When the the moment I saw Zuckerberg and Airbnb, Uber, other places just start, and obviously Google and Microsoft start making cuts, you're like, okay, people are going to lower their costs. They're doing triage, as you're saying, to make the balance sheet, to make the earnings. Triage works in the final third of a bear market. Okay, so. But triage does not work in a bull market. You don't get rewarded for triage yeah, in a bull market. I, I totally get it. You have to innovate. You have to build great products. So, Saxman, when you're looking at the overall market, I think we talked about the average recession or downturn is six quarters plus or minus one or two historically we are entering the seventh quarter of the downturn at least in tech started by tech in the first quarter of 2022 here we are in the third quarter starting in july of 2023 what's your take on what the next six quarters look like are we going to be sideways or are we going to as chamat saying hey there's a lot of people who are trying to pay catch up they missed this bump and now they're competing and they have to at the end of the year Capital allocators are going to show uh, in their yearly reports what they did this year. And now they're like, hey, we got to put some some bets into some high growth companies. Is this the setup for another mania and uh, maybe unhealthy behavior? So Jason, I don't think it's going to be a mania, but I do think that the market is ripping today because the market is basically pricing in the idea of a soft landing along with inflation being tamed. So you had a positive CPI report at 3%. You had a hot jobs report a week or two ago. And there's an interesting article in the Wall Street Journal today talking about the odds of a soft landing improving. Mm. And they have some data for that. I don't particularly agree with the subheadline. They're trying to. Latest data suggests a lot of past inflation was transitory. That seems. Re yeah. <laughs> that I think is, is being too charitable to the Fed yeah. because when they use the word transitory, they were using it as an excuse not to raise interest rates. And we just had the fastest rate tightening cycle ever over the past year. That's the reason why inflation has gone down. It was not transitory until they jacked up interest rates from zero to 5%. So the Wall Street Journal, I think, is doing a little covering for the Fed there. But nonetheless, I think everybody is pleasantly surprised that A, CPI is now down to 3%, and B, you have not had a significant cooling of the jobs market. So certainly the odds now of a soft landing have gone up. And the thing that's sort of surprising about what Larry Summers is saying is that if you believe that inflation is going to come roaring back, that's certainly a contrarian bet. That's not what the market is saying right now. What the market is predicting right now, and, and the reason why stocks are rallying, is what the market is thinking is, well, if inflation is down to 3% and we can end the year at 3 or even lower, then the Fed can start cutting next year. And mm -hmm. so they're starting to price in rate cuts. But if inflation comes roaring back, you're not going to get rate cuts. And so stock prices are going to go down. I don't see how you can have a scenario of even higher interest rates from here, along with higher stock prices. I think you need lower rates to get higher stock prices. And one of Brad's charts shows this. If you look at the software index, the median enterprise value divided by next 12 months revenue, what you see here is that the mean multiple is 7.7, .7, excluding the COVID distortion. We're at 6.6 .6 now. So there is room for the software index to run up pretty nicely here. You could argue yeah, that it's undervalued yeah. or, or fairly yeah. valued. You see the 10 years at 3.8%. And 
If you compare it to where we were before COVID, when interest rates were in the mid twos to around 3%. Yeah, we got to an 18x multiple. It was crazy. Yeah. So so basically, if interest rates go down, I think for sure you'll see multiples go up. But I think if interest rates are going to keep going up from here, then you're not going to get that rally, or I don't see why you would. Well, the thing to keep in mind is I think this chart is not that helpful because this is all unprofitable software companies. So I think the more important thing is to look at the broad-based index. The thing with these companies is that even if rates are at 3% or 6% or 2% or 1%, that trick is over. These companies are not going to get out of this cul-de-sac until they figure out true product market fit, how to eliminate churn, how to drive medium to long-term profitability. And most of them, unfortunately, don't have a clear path to that. And the problem is all of the old legacy software companies, X of Salesforce, have still not got to profitability. So meaning the ones that went public in like the early teens are still sucking wind, losing money. So the idea that software businesses generate long-term profits is so far, unfortunately, been a fallacy. So that chart, I think, will stay exactly the, the same way it is. I think the bloom is off the rose. But where the money can go What would to, change that, though, Chamath? Because would, 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 we need to stop at this point to look talk about these SaaS companies because what would change that if they actually get to profitability? And Saks, what's the chances they get to profitability? Because that would make them look more like Microsoft or... The biggest yeah. problem that software as a service businesses have is the same thing that it benefits from, which is cycle time. So the cycle time for a SaaS business to build a feature set, to get product market fit, and to get early revenue is very short. The problem with that is that is the equivalent amount of time it takes for a competitor or several competitors to compartmentalize and chop and slice and dice that feature set into a bunch of smaller subscale SaaS products that then go after it and cannibalize that revenue. Hmm. So I think the issue that they have is they show contractually a lot of revenue expansion that looks good on the service, but underneath these guys are in this constant hamster wheel of trying to build features and trying to keep their head above water. And all of that treading consumes enormous amounts of cash. And so from an OPEX perspective, these SaaS businesses, they just suck. They don't generate free cash flow, except for a few. Let me let me bring Saks into this. Saks, do you think that these companies will get to having a PE ratio? Because a lot of times you pull them up and it's like price earnings ratio, not applicable for this company because there are no earnings. And you've dedicated your no, career to SaaS and I, you I, built a billion dollar company. So give us the other side. Huh. The other side of it is that software businesses have great gross margins. I mean, you spend all of your R&D creating the first instance of the product and there, thereafter, every additional instance of the product is basically almost free to provision on the margin. So these are super high margin businesses. Once you achieve dominance in your category, there's a bunch of different modes. You can create a platform. You have the largest sales and marketing operation. Everyone wants to go with the market leader. So there's you know, a bunch of different ways to lock in your advantage. And not all those companies are losing money. A growing number mm -hmm. of them are making money. I just think that's like a sweeping overgeneralization. Got it. So I still think software businesses are some of the best businesses. But well, why don't they get to off, earnings? I mean, faster. obviously, we're off, we're off on a little bit of a tangent here, yes. which is I could have shown you a slide of almost any basket of growth stocks, yeah. and you would have had something similar, which is they're still trading below their seven year mean on a multiple right. basis. And so my point was simply that if interest rates are coming down, there is room for these stocks to no, go you're up. You're right about that. Yeah, okay, let's get, let me 